evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here. My name is Ross Annenberg. I'm here with John Belger. And we are here for the, this is a mouthful, ladies and gentlemen, the Hoppington Hillers competing against Tingsboro, Groton, Dunstable. I won't say high schools, high school singular, high school plurals, John. It is sort of a regional school with three different swim teams combined because of the lack of uh, enrollment in one of the variety of schools, apparently. But the girls team is undefeated. The boys team, from my understanding, is seven and three. Hopkinton's coming off a win against Concord Carlisle yesterday for the girls with a loss to Wayland High School. And the boys, the boys lost both Concord Carlisle combination there and Wayland. We're looking for a good meet tonight, Saturday night. It's a late arriving crowd, John. Apparently, the NFL playoffs have taken uh, precedent to the Hopkinton Hillers swim team. There you go. Any opening I, thoughts, John? Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, warming up here, and it looks like it's going to be a, a dogfight out here tonight. Um, nothing should be taken for granted by Hopkinton t this evening. And that is a very good uh, observation as I see, as I scan the deck, the Hopkinton Hiller coaches are in their obligatory orange. Not their best color, but it will be suitable for this evening. They do wear green on occasion. Also, uh, there's a lot of fast skins tonight. They're expecting a very fast pool with the competition tonight. Diving, there's going to be a lot of diving people. We're going to have some uh, a new, new uh, swim officials. Not the individual that was uh, last time we were doing this, unfortunately. He was a little, well, we won't comment on that. Okay. So as we start the process, I didn't do that with you. I did that with my wife, and it was very observant that he was a little slow to the uptake. Okay. We start off with the medley relay, and for those who are concerned, we have in lane four, Julia Pillarella. Excuse me, in lane four, Abby Fisher, Emily Way, Tina McCann, Tiana McCann, Olivia Hanrahan. That's their core four. Julie Pillarella, Lydia Frank and Rachel Zale and Emily Schmidt in lane two, and Kaylee Kahane, Emily Trudeau, and Kylie Salyards and Mallory Pessoff, Peshoff, excuse me, in lane six. Yeah, that's going to be a very fast um, three, three foursomes for Hopkinton. Um, I'm looking for the lane four to really show something tonight. That's Julia, Lydia, Rachel, and Emily. But as you mentioned, Ross. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. We, I got, I got we, the lanes wrong. We on have that one. Our, sorry um, about that. Just to clarify, we have we have sheets here, and for some reason, the sheets are dyslexic. They have uh, four, two, and six instead of two, four, and six. I'm not really sure why, but. I guess the way Coach King perceives it is that the four is the main lane, which is the number one relay team. So it goes first with two being second and six being third, just based on the representation for individual girls. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. The last time I was with you, Ross, um, I was noticing that the lane alignments were a little different from the press sheet. And uh, I was informed by my daughter that Yes, indeed. Uh, for that meet, the coach of the opposing team had had pressed a complaint about the the stands here at uh, Keefe Tech, and um, had their had their swimmers last minute move to different lanes. So we we do have to be sort of careful about looking out at the swimmers. That is correct, John. I guess the visiting team has the option of going even or odd, and they've chosen. I believe tonight they've chosen odd which is the normal way but if they have not chosen odd we will inform you so you are clear when you see the video yep and because the hopkinton has such a large team I, I think you and i both know some of the swimmers but we can generally pick out which ones from which lanes uh in this pool from facing us uh from the front lane one is the closest lane to us two, three is, is near the uh, diving board, four, five, and six are all the way in the back. That is correct. As you're looking on your <coughs> screen going forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, respectively. 
And the crowd is arriving. Yeah. Not too much going on on a Saturday night, but if there is things going on and there's updates to be had for football, we'll give them to you because we know that the Hillers sporting events take precedent over any professional sporting events. Now, and now again, I believe yep. we're doing the diving first. This is taking a new precedent. Yep. I actually enjoy this tremendously. I think and the swimmers like it too. And the diving, uh, the diving aspect is Alyssa Annenberg, Maddie Staus, Brianna, Allie, Leah, and Lizzie. With the first three, I best I believe competing. And that the announcers are giving the order of the dive. There's going to be three judges, six dives to compete against. And this is a double dual meet, boys versus boys and girls versus girls, collectively. And there's a hush among the crowd as the So this brings up a question for me. Will there be another warm-up after the dive? There is another warm-up. There's an obligatory 10-minute warm-up somewhere amongst the ranks where the diving used to be, but all the lanes will be flush. Gotcha. Now, last uh, meet I worked, um, Dave Franklin was behind the scorer's table feeding us up scores. So tonight we're kind of on our own, I think. Not a bad dive. I say fours across the board. Okay. I was a little off, but that's that's your one of your standard dives. We'll do it. This is Allie Morrow, former gymnast, high level, who's making her debut in the in the diving world. And she's doing great. Not bad. Yeah, that looked good. <clears throat> Bad for Ali Moreau. Now I learned from you last time that the key was to be close to the board. That's one of the keys, but I can't say that's the only key, depending on the degree of difficulty of the dive and where the dive ends up. Got it, yeah. Like when you're doing that yes. type of dive, you want to stay close to the board. Aaron, Jack, Jimmy, and Jack B. As you will notice, there are a lot of competitors this evening. For some reason, Coach King has decided that he's going to let everybody have dive, but only three competitors are actually official. Yeah, it's a nice thing, especially with the hometown crowd. 
parents get a chance to see their kids. I wasn't impressed with that dive, but I guess the judges are looking at something different, John. Yeah, it looks like they they have a different angle. She nailed it. That was a very nice dive. Six dives across the board for each individual boy and girl. So we're looking at a collective dive total of three, six, nine, 12, 15, 16. We're looking at potentially almost 100 dives. So if you um, need to go to a bathroom real quick, I would take, take it quick because there's 100 dives. Approximately 100 dives collectively where we're going to be in this for a little bit. I'm going to give you a little uh, update. The Chiefs are ahead 7 nothing versus the Texans. The end of the first. Last time we were we met, you you were mentioning that Reese is a very consistent diver. Is that his his strong one of his strong sport points? Yeah, Reese is a Reese is an all scholastic, all state diver who's on his way to UMass. And that looked good. And it seems that dive that he does, he can do in his sleep. That's how much he's perfected it over the course of the past 36 months. Yeah, in the this, in this short time I've been looking at it, it, it has only gotten better. And this looks like his main competitor. Mm, I would give him fives and a halves.
bad. Nice play there, Allie Moore. That's a nice 2.3 degree, degree of difficulty. Nice. Jack Mack, better known as John McDonald, or vice versa, as he hesitated, but I don't know if he gets any points off for the hesitation. Well, he almost, there's not a, it wasn't a bad dive, but he almost made it to the other end of the pool on that dive. Yeah, yeah. He definitely had a head start on everybody. Jim Brainer's been here for the new year, our formidable diving coach along with five other schools. important thing about the diving is that because, because of the quality of divers in the Hopkinton program, I think that schools come in maybe not intimidated, but definitely know that they're up against a high quality team. Again, we're not saying much because it's the the video takes care of itself for the dives. As we're not aficionados, there's no timekeeping. It's all judge-oriented. Three officials who make a collective total times it by the amount of the degree of difficulty plus some other formula. We'll leave that to the mathematicians. 
which gives the final tally per dive. Total it up, and that is the cumulative dive amount. Now I know that there's <coughs> one of these men, men divers for Hopkinton also is swimming. Aaron Howe. Is this the gentleman here? It is. He's, okay. a, he's a dual threat. Yep. Wheaton bound, Wheaton College bound. Looks like the place filled up a bit. It looks like almost a capacity crowd. Very, very, most people are here to see the swimming, but some people are here to actually see the diving and swimming respectively. And this is Reese Donahue with a second dive. Swimming is one of those sports, John, where there's a lot of sportsmanship involved that you'll see during the course of the evening. A lot of clapping and a lot of activities for that. Yeah, it's always impressed me when watching these Hopkinton meets how the Hopkinton student athletes are such a good, such good sportsmen. Now we're coming up on the third round. Some of the more intricate dives, you'll notice that some of the novice divers are not as skilled in that, and that's something you acquire, John, over the course of practice and muscle memory. Now, let's talk a little bit about the three uh, judges here in front of us. I don't know if the, our audience can see it, but there's two with a white shirt and then another guy. Do you know anything about that, who those people are? Yeah, the two officials and then the coach of uh, Tingsboro Grand Dunstable, from my understanding. Don't okay. quote me on that. Okay. And the officials are from the league? They are from the Mass Officials Association. Gotcha. Okay. They're assigned each during the course of the year. Something's going on, we're not entirely sure, but. Yeah, I've seen that official that's on the left uh, call some of the divers over to talk to them about some of maybe some of the scoring. 
which is always good. And he's making his presence known. He's a pretty big guy, I don't know. I, I think <laughs> his presence is known. Whether he likes it or not. Is there a special name for that scoring pad that they have in front of them that they hold up? I'm not really sure. A good dive by Maddie. Now, do they have a certain amount of time that they have between dives that they can take, or is it once they stand up on the board? Yeah, no, I heard from my daughter that the coaches do use these videos. Quick update. Kansas City's looking at their 11th straight victory at 10 nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's when they go good, you, you can tell. But when they go bad, you know. Thank you. 
at the fourth time for Allie Morrow. Again, she's got to learn the technique. She has the skill set, she just has to learn the technique. Different than gymnastics, you have to learn how to land on your head than your feet, John. Yeah, I'm sure she's up for the challenge. get some height or some distance. <laughs> if he was at the Calaveras County Fairgrounds, he would have won the Bullfrog Jumping Contest with there you go. distance. Made famous in this Samuel Clement Clemens, better known as Mark Twain, I believe. John, I actually saw a concert there back in 1987, The Grateful Dead. Wow, that must have been exciting. 65,000 tie-dye shirts. Hmm. Not, I was not one of them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, some of the towels that the swimmers from the opposing team have are tie-dye. I don't know if the audience can see that. You'll notice that some of the, if you can see it on the screen, some of the divers go through a little bit of a routine before stepping up onto the board. some tough scores to the Hopkinton Divers. He's not given any leeway. We have to check his passport to see if, or birth certificate to see if he's from Russian origin. <laughs> now, you said he was the opposing team's coach? Correct. Okay. That's just an educated guess. Yep. Because I noticed that the young lady behind is making a lot of signals for the divers. Four, six, six, four, <laughs> no, Hopkinton has a very good diving squad.
at this point. Nothing for you, Chief fans. This is Reese, fourth dive. Point seven. That's well, that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. There were a lot of uh, different uh, elements to that. Spencer Franklin in the house. Former co-captain, two-time co-captain, Northeastern Husky. Solo tonight now with his little feline. Definitely an inadvertent whistle. Let's go to the videotape on that one. Got a little chuckle out of the crowd. A little levity break. A little comedic relief. Looks like a lobster now. We're on to our fifth round. Five rounds in. <clears throat> Yeah, she came to dive tonight. Anybody interested in a Powerball winner tonight? Nine hundred million dollars. That sounds like an Austin Powers number. John, did you play the Powerball? I haven't yet. I'm on the on the way home. I'm picking them up. But I played going up. I played the five hundred, the two fifty. Just a donation to the education fund. Yes. Happens to the best of us. 44 states are participating in it.
tell you, as a fan, you have to appreciate the muscle memory that goes into this sport. These kids have practiced and practiced and practiced. appreciate it. She gets her talent from her mother. That's obvious. See the uh, coach here in front of us, <laughs> trying to give the kids a little encouragement about what they should be doing. It's Coach Brainerd. Yep. AKA Santa Claus. He shaved his beard, so he's into the spring mode. He's a he's a clamor in the summer. He enjoys clams and shucking them, and and making them. Hopefully, I'll be a recipient of some of those good crustaceans. John, it's the witching hour. Yeah. Aaron Howell up for his fifth dive. Both parents are taking video, dueling videos over there. Not bad. Six and a half. Look good. Nice. Yep. Nice dive by H. Howell. A. Howell. AKA Aaron. 13 nothing approaching halftime. The Houston Oilers, AKA the Texans, are losing. Reese is up to his fifth dive. Let's see what he takes out of his magic bag of tricks. videos tonight by the, by the Donnies, just spectators. Solid dive for the dunster. Yeah. Now we're in the final round now. We've approached dive number six.
six and a half. She's having a very good afternoon. Very nice, very nice. This was last time. Wow. How close was that to hitting the board? <laughs> Yeah, that one coach is always low.
John, I noticed a t-shirt that says, three towns, two schools, one team, together we are TGD. I wonder if they trademarked that or nobody really cares. <laughs> It seems like the entire North Shore is swimming against Hopkinton today. If that's considered the North Shore. Yeah, they're more central north. Pretty solid dive, man. Aaron Hall. his last dive. Completes the diving portion, and I believe we'll take a short break. Okay, welcome back from to Keith Tech. Looks like we're coming back from the diving without a warm up. Um, swimmers are lining up for the 200 med medley relay. What did you think of that diving, Ross? Very interesting. Very long. It's probably one of the longest diving events other than my diving that I watched my daughter over the course of a three-hour period at either MIT or Harvard. So it's still quicker than most, but a lot longer than a normal high school competitive dive. My wife looks brilliant tonight. We're going to a birthday party tonight, 50-year-old friend in the town of Natick, former town of Douglas Flutie, who's no longer a resident, lives in Florida now. Yeah, I, I just recently read that he actually grew up in Florida. He moved, I think what I understand is that he grew up in Florida, moved to New Jersey for a year, and then came up here to Natick in middle school. Okay. And then became the prodigy or the icon when he threw the pass, the, uh, the aforementioned Catholic pass, or better known as the Hail Mary. Yep, yep. It's one of those events that everybody remembers where they were when they were watching it. That is true. It was Friday. I was watching, about to watch Full House with my mother because I was going out, and I said to my friends, they have to wait, circa 1984, and I told them that I want to see this last pass. So I did visualize it live and in person via the TV. Yep. And where were you, John? I was in my I was in my room watching it. I I just recall it very in vivid detail, watching it. So. And just a little side note: my daughter actually dives with Gerard Phelan's daughter. Oh, isn't that funny? So it's a unique yeah. uh, circle all around. Yep. Who do we have tonight, John? Okay. For the roster. For the roster, um, in lane four, we have Abby Fisher, Emily Wee, Tiana McCann, and Olivia Handrahan. In lane two, Julia Pillarella, Lydia Franklin, Rachel Zale, and Emily Schmidt. They're off. Yep. And of course, in lane six, we have Kaylee Cohane, Emily Trudeau, and Kylie Salyards, Mallory Pishoff. And the first uh, leg of the relay is the backstroke as they do the flip yes. turn, 50 yards. 
Look for lane four to come out pretty fast in this heat. As you see, Abby's uh, leading, leading off in first. Looks like Hopkinton is doing well. Go to the breaststroke, then the butterfly, and the final leg of the relay is the freestyle. It's Coach King is giving his salutations in a very affirmative manner. Very excited tonight, Coach King. He's going to go up and down the aisle. If you put a Fitbit on him, I bet you he goes over about three or four miles. Yep. As we mentioned in the lead-in, a lot of the kids uh, from Hopkinton are wearing their tech suits tonight. We had, had a little obstruction there for a second. I had to use some of my, my willpower and my people. Looks like we have... Um, Tiana is in first there in the um, lane four. Who's finishing up on uh, 53? Lane, in lane four? Yeah. Uh, Olivia. Olivia Hammerhand. Olivia Hammerhand, yep. It's close, yep. She's going to have to pick up the pace. She can do it. stretch and down the stretch they come it's door to door I don't know if she's going to be able to catch her probably not doesn't look like it nope, nope. unfortunately we'll take two and three Hopkinton is, two and three which is a wash yeah, yeah, you're right, oh, excuse you're me right, we lost right. two points on that we probably picked up 13 for the diving at least for the girls, I'm not sure with the boys. Six, four, two, one. Six, four, two, first, second, and third. Hopkinton placed second and third. It was a close race, but unfortunately, Olivia couldn't overcome the butterfly, and she came out fast in the first 25, but the opposing swimmer just reached and touched her out. Yeah, now we have the second um, heat of this. In lane four, Sarah, Leah, Maggie, and Julia. And in lane two, Sierra, Ashley, Stephanie, and Mercedes. And this is a non-scoring event. This particular heat is just unofficial, so they're getting experience as we talk about collectively. But it just shows you the depth of the opposing team. They have, they're filling up uh, one, three, and five. Which is rare. But it would be good if uh, Hopkinton made a sh good showing here. And they're off. Same lineup, backstroke. Yeah. Backstroke leading it off, 50 back. They look for the overhead uh, line to set up their finish. Halftime of the Houston Texan Kansas City Chief game, 13 nil. I'm referring to a soccer term. 13 0. Again, it's a competitive second heat. Seems like the opposing team, Tingsboro, Groton, Dunstable, oh, that's a mouthful. Uh, they're competing very hard. As you mentioned, John, they have three different lanes that they're filling up, so they have a number of participants also. Photographs taken tonight by Miss Kelly. People helping on the deck. Julie Forte, Miss Cody, and a couple other parents. We thank them all as usual, Mr. Gorbel. What do we have for the next event, John? Next event coming up, we have the 200 freestyle. We have Grace Cavanaugh. Boys. Oh, I'm sorry, the boys. <laughs> I will get it right one day. Um, we have the 200 medley relay for the boys coming up. Um, 
Lane four, we have Young Joan Kim, Sam Richardson, Paul Richardson, Austin Schofield. Lane two, Kyle, Paul, Sam Cody, Connor Murchie, Aaron Howe. And of course, lane six, Kyle Hall, Ray Lucas, Shane Horseman, and Ian Holmes. Nice. Again, we're just giving you the, the, the entries for lanes four, two, and six, just so we can move along because yeah. we're trying to get this fast pace event going quickly. Yeah. And it's almost over the relay. Again, Hopkinton placed second and third behind Tinsborough, Brighton, Dunstable. Unofficially, we'll get the diving results shortly. Six points for the girls, eight points for the opposing team. And as usual, um, Hopkinton showing a lot of class when it comes to the sportsmanship as the kids from, I'm going to just call it TGD, uh, do their wind down. As opposed to TGI. <laughs> yes. That was last night. Where my daughter works. Oh, does she? Part time during school breaks. Uh huh. You guys look very fancy tonight. Very fancy. Co-captain parents are Mr. Howell and Mr. Donnie, who keepers at the gate, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> They're keeping people away, standing room only crowd. Now, Ross, I remember we're going to a 21st birthday party. Now we're going to a 50th. What's happening to us? Three decades. Three decades. I already gave the lineups on these. Uh, Hopkinton is in lane two and lane lane two, four, and six. And they're off. Yes, we do. This, this race is far from over at this point. Looks like the Richardson boys are in lane four. Paul waiting. And Sam has made up time. Yes, it is. This, this looks like Paul Richardson, lane four. He's ahead by a not a much. <laughs> well, we had Austin Schofield on the do on the deck there. Again, it might be the same situation that we're dealing with. Yep. Unless Austin keeps up the pace. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. He's got to make the turn here. No, no. Yeah, Hopkinton boards are going to take second, and that's it. Third looks like Dunstable's got third in place. Yeah, so that one was. Um, TGD first, Hopkinton second, TGD third. Okay. 
doesn't seem like there's going to be another um, round for that one. So we're going to the 200 freestyle for the girls. Lane four, Grace Cavanaugh. Lane two, Bridget Belger. Lane six, Caitlin O'Connor. We have uh, two f a freshman and two sophomores in this race. And an offspring. Oh, and an offspring, exactly. It's <laughs> oh, my daughter, yeah. I'm, I'm even wondering, wondering what he's saying. <laughs> our, our cameraman knows what I'm talking about. Oh, of course. He's been around for three years. Oh, it's getting loud. It's going to get louder, I think, at this, this point. I think this is, uh, the, these guys came out to, to swim. This is on the public access station, the Ocho 8, on your dial. Not sure what it is on Verizon, but on Comcast, it's 8. Four plus four for you math majors. Everybody's up on this one. As we mentioned, we have uh, Grace Cavanaugh in lane four, Bridget Belger in lane two, Caitlin O'Connor in lane six. There's some conferring going on. I'm not really sure what. We're not privy to that, but there's definitely some conferring going on. Yeah, I think they had to call the backup timer on... Um, the last race. That's Bob Murchie out there in lane three. He's an experienced timer. Now the girls have been waiting for a while for this, so hopefully they don't get psyched out. No, we weren't able to get an extra timer. Yeah. I don't know if somebody made the TVLs or whatever on that last one. As we mentioned, it's a 200 freestyle Eight for the girls. The Eight laps of the pool. Go get him. Go Again, get him. it's sort of a sprint, but it's, you have to pace yourself. You want to get out really good. Uh, it's my understanding the 100 uh, freestyle, uh, the 100 after the 100, it's the harder part because you're trying to compete as you go faster and faster up and down the aisle or in the lane. Yep. You have to leave something in the tank, but you have to use the tank at the right time. Absolutely. Well said. We're just splitting out to here. We're coming up on the 100. It's like a 56 split. Lane four for Hopkinson is out ahead of She's him. out ahead, yep. Looks like Hopkinson's in first. TGD second, Hopkinson third. Grace is just floating along here. You can't leave it for long. about a two a two minute. Go, go. 
push it, push it. Push, look like push it. Make it. It's not going to make it. No. Nope. It's going to be a first and fourth. Maybe we can get fifth, too. Oh, this one's key. This is a point that we need. Nah, it doesn't look like she's going to make it. First, fourth. First and fourth gets us eight points. So they get eight points. It's going to be a wash for the girls. It's the obligatory kissing your sister. No value. Yes, yeah, so we have the 200 free for the boys coming up. We have in lane four, Jake Glover. Lane two, Brad Canty. Lane six, Zach Holbro. I don't see anybody in lane six at this point. What do we have for the... Uh, it's a 200 freestyle. We have lane four, Jake Glover. Lane two, Brad Canty. Lane six, Zach Holbro. I don't know if Zach's competing. Is he there? Or? I don't see him. Once again, it's eight lap, eight, eight laps of the f of the um, pool. There's a lot of activity going on here. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Oh, Zach, they're calling out for Zach, so. Got Jake Glover in lane four after the first 50 where he's in second. Halfway there. What do we have next there? Uh, coming up. Coming up. Coming up, we have the 200 IM. The girls are lining up over there. But we, we still have this race here, so let's see. Looks like um, going into the final lap, TGD is going to take first. Looks like they're going to take second. And looks like Jake Glover will come in third. And um, is there a race going on here for fourth? There is. And they're killing it now. Brad Canty here in second. In lane two. 
Come on, Brad. I think he nipped him in the end. That's a critical he point. Yeah, he, he, he won that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he came in fifth. In, or fourth. Fourth. Fourth, yep. That's critical. He, he picks up a couple of points. Okay, as I mentioned, we have the 200 freestyle. Lane four, Grace Cavanaugh. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Uh, the 200 IM, lane four, Emily Wee. Lane two, Lydia Franklin. Lane six, Logan Salyards. <laughs> 200 IM, of course, um, 50 yards for each stroke. I don't know, what I'm seeing on the board is not what I'm seeing on the, in the uh, pool, so. And we have four lengths of the pool for the butterfly with Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the I am, I apologize. That's right. I stand corrected. We have Wade, Franklin, and Salyards. Lydia Franklin, a four-time letter person, captain, daughter of Julie Forte and David Franklin, our astute cameraman. She's got her fast skin on along with Emily Way and Logan Salyard. I don't think this is a hard event. I don't think that's Emily. I know. I, I was just saying that. I, I, I think in lane four, it's Julia Pillarella. I don't think it's uh, Emily. Gotcha. All right. So we have a scratch. Yeah. It could be. I'm not sure. But I, I reckon I didn't recognize Emily out there. We're in the breaststroke lap here. This is the critical um, stroke for this, this event. Again, it looks like, uh, unfortunately, Grotten Dunstable, Tingsboro Grotten Dunstable TGD is uh, first and second place with a pretty sizable lead, so. We're looking to get possibly. Yeah, it's going to be a fight for third. Lydia's got to kick it up here. Oh, she's got her. She's got her. Okay. Yeah, getting third and, and fifth place is, is not going to accumulate a lot of points. So we got to figure out a way to, to come up with a number of points. Good, run, good swim by Lydia. Unfortunately, the other two coming in fifth and sixth place. What do we have for the IM for the boys? For the boys IM, we have um, Sam, Sam Richardson in lane four, Sean Kelly lane two, Shane Horseman lane six. At least that's what I show. Yep. Gotcha. I tell you, it seems like every time I, I announce, Hopkinton has it is challenged. But did you hear anything about the score on the sw on the diving? Haven't heard I think it. we placed one, two, and four. Okay. So not the full 13 points then. I'm not sure what uh, 
we can get a confirmation from our scoring man slash video man, what, how many points can you, what's the max amount of points you can receive for diving? One, two, and three? So the first three qualify, everything else is just Got it. Uh, icing on the cake. Got it. Okay, as I mentioned, um, we have the 200 IM for the boys. Lane four, Sam Richardson. Lane two, Sean Kelly. Lane six, Shane Horseman. Not sure what Coach King's thought process was regarding the girls I am with the scratch of Emily Way. Maybe he's looking to give that one away, one and two, and then not, you know, looking at times and saying she may not have competed anyways, and give her a different opportunity where she can excel. That's my yeah. only thought. I would say you probably have it right. Yeah, as you see right now, I'm not sure that the, you can see on camera, Coach King spends a lot of time at the scoring desk. Yeah, he's trying to get a he's trying to get a, a running total to see where he has, see where his best events are with his timing mechanisms, his metrics. He's into the Sabre metrics. Yes. He's a Theo Epstein disciple. Yes. Theo Epstein, as you know, uh, is the president of the Chicago Cubs. Grandparents or grandfather and uncle were the ones who wrote the, the movie Casablanca. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Brookline native, has a twin brother. I tell you, with the off season that's been going on with these salaries, you wonder about that whole philosophy, uh, Sabre metrics. <laughs> well, it has its, it has some distinction. Uh, still, as you watch as a baseball fan, which I am, and I hopefully you are, it's still the naked eye that determines how good a player is, in my opinion. Yep. The metrics are good, the numbers are good, but if you take a look at individuals that the Red Sox have brought in, like the Kevin Euclid's of the world who may have an on-base percentage of 450. Um, Kevin Euclid's is good, but he's not a Hall of Famer. Sure. Well, the thing is, it's harder, it's harder to find them now that everybody's ascribing to it. But he is married to Tom Brady's sister, so that's a good thing. That's a critical component of him. Because he gets to go to Costa Rica to the Brady <laughs> Mansion with Giselle. So it looks like uh, First place, and this is um, one of the Richardson boys. One of the Richardson. Yes, Sam Richardson, first place. TGD got second, and it looks like third and third fourth. and fourth will go to TGD. And fifth place will go to Hopkinton. Sean making a valiant effort to get that, but fell a little short. What do we have next? Next, we, we're into the 50 free. I believe there's a few heats. Yeah, there will be. There's three heat. There's three heats. In the first heat, we have Abby Fisher, Olivia Handrahan, and Emily Schmidt. And I think that's where the distinction is. I believe that's Emily Way in lane four. Yeah, it is. Yep. So I think that's where the the uh, replacement was, the scratch, and then the replacement. Yep. And she's got her fast suit on. As does. Olivia and so this is going to be a, this is going to be a seminal event right here. This will turn one way or another for the Hopkinton Hillers. We're hoping for first, second, and third. I don't know about that, but we're looking for at least uh, a quantitative finish, shall we say, where the numbers add up. Exactly. As opposed to what they say in the in the world of. Uh, pheasantry. We don't want a goose egg. Nope, nope. I don't think with the three swimmers we have out there, it's going to happen. 
And I believe a goose is a pheasant. Is that correct? A I'm foul? pretty sure it's a fowl. Okay, I was close. Might be a relative. I've never pheasant. had it, so. And they're off. We'll Emily know. Way's got to take this one home. She comes out fast. And Hanrahan. If we can get one, two, Coach King might have put this in. Second. Yep. Coach King might have put this in place. And they're off. Down the stretch they come. It's going to look good. It's looking good. It might good. be one, two, three. It looks like it looks very good to me. John Belger might have might have predicted yeah. a one, two, it's three finish. Happen. One, two, three finish. We need it. Look at that. Yeah. It is a photo finish. Yeah. Woo! Wow. Coach King, that was very, very astute by Coach King's sabermetrics. Got to give Brian some credit there. Now for Heat 2, we have Emily Trudeau in lane 4, Julia Altman in lane 2, Mallory Pishoff Again, lane 6. Again, these are the, un, uh, the unscored events. They're unofficial. They're getting the coach's eye, and they want to get some experience in the pool as we determine... I don't know. I looked. I look at some of the kids that came out of that last event, and I don't see. I could have. They could have. He could have done a late scratch on some of them, one of them at least. For the second heat. For the first heat. The first heat that we just. Yep. Well, we took one, two, and three. So. Yes. Everything yes. else is the, the names of the individuals. Remember, when you deal with high school, it's it's the. The the, the letters on the front as opposed to the numbers on the back. Exactly. No, 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 no. Yeah, so we had in this in this heat, Emily Trudeau, lane four, Julie Altman, lane two, Mallory Pishoff, lane six. Can we get an unofficial scoring at some point? I mean, we, we might have to clone our cameraman because he's the astute scoring. Yeah, it looks good here. It looks like Emily's going to win that sec the second heat. It's look, it looks like a Canadian Prime Minister finish. Pierre Trudeau's granddaughter, Emily <laughs> Trudeau. <laughs> now for... Um, Heat three, we have um, Mercedes Lahai, Sarah Kang, and Megan Halloran. Lane four, Mercedes. Lane two, Sarah. Lane six, Megan. We're in heat three, yep. How many heats do we have for the boys? Just one. <coughs> Coming down, Hopkinton is going to get one, two, and three in late in the third heat. Very good showing, Sarah Kang, lane two. Okay, coming up for good sportsman being sportsmanship being shown by Hopkinton. Obviously, the TGD swimmer in lane five is struggling a bit. 
if she finally made it. Okay, for um, the single heat in the boys, 50 free. Paul Richardson, lane four. Austin Schofield, lane two. Aaron Howe, lane six. Be great to get a one, two, three finish like the girls did. I noticed uh, the TGD uh, individual did a uh, bless themselves for the sign of the cross. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I don't know if uh, God is looking on him alone, but we'll see. Okay, Ross, I'm going to call it. It's going to be a one, two, three finish. Hopkinton. I feel like the Richardsons got it tonight. Well, that'll be interesting. Lane three seems like he came out of the blocks pretty quick as they turned. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Oh, it is a really photo finish now. It's going to be, yep. We need lane. We need a winner on lane one, and Richardson takes it. He'll take we it. We need. We need it. Yep. You got it. You got to buy a hair. Five minute break here. And we'll take a five minute break. And we're back after a short break. Thank God for that. We're, we have a couple unofficial totals here. 37-25 TGD boys against the Hopkinton Hillers and 31-31 tie score pre-diving results. We have not heard the diving results. I think they're tallying them up as we speak to, just to certify them. Unofficially, I think Hopkinton girls got one, two, and four. I don't know about the boys. I'm sure the boys got at least one and possibly three. That's my guess. Yeah, so it, it's it's obviously a horse race, this meet. It's not a horse race in the football game, though. It's 20 to nothing. The Kansas City Chiefs have uh, taken a controlling lead. Their defense is just off the charts. If the Chiefs win and the Bengals win tonight, then the Chiefs go to Denver, and the Bengals will come to Pitt, will we come to Patriots. Just for a little point of reference there, John. I'm not sure okay. if you're interested or not. But. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds interesting, but I'm going to give you the lineups here for the 100 fly. We have uh, Rachel Zale, line, uh, lane four. Who's in lane two and six? Tiana McCann in lane two, Kylie Salyards. Lane six. Gotcha. It's a fan favorite. So we just had the scores from the diving. That was the boys, though. We don't have the girls. Okay. We came one and oh, here we go. So uh, as we mentioned, lane four, Rachel Zale, lane two, Tiana McCann, six, Kylie Salyards. It's a hundred fly.
Okay, after the first 50, we have TGD in first, lane four, Rachel second, lane two, Tiana third. Again, if we can get a, um, a two, three, five. Yeah, it's gonna be, a, the five is gonna be tough, but we're gonna make it happen. It's Kylie up there. Two, three, five, we get eight points. Six, one, four, we get eight points, that's a wash. That's key. That's Kylie's key right gotta there. make that happen right there. It's coming up. I don't know if she's gonna do it. Doesn't oh, come on, she's got it, come on. No. She's gonna lose. That's a tough one. Obviously showing my, showing the side that I want. Now for the boys, we have uh, lane four, Sean Kelly. Lane two, Young Jun Kim. Lane six, Trevor Perkins. Boys have an uphill battle in this meet. I think they're gonna tally the girls. I think Maddie won, Lissy came in second. I'm getting kind of hungry, I have to tell you. So. First and third, yep, I'll confirm that. Once again, 100 fly. Watch how the, these guys rotate their arms, kind of like dolphin type. They're, everybody's tied at the 25 yard. Let's see how it comes out after 50. Looks like the Groton Dunstable. It's just taking a small lead, both lane three and five. But it is close. They've hit the wall together. That's Young Jun Kim. He's gotta make this happen. He's doing lane well. Lane two, doing well. Doing He's in well. the final, yep. He's taking the lead. There he goes. Got a lot of yelling. Uh, looks like he's going to take second. Maybe third, actually. Oh, boy. I stand corrected. He didn't have anything left in the tank. The first, the first uh, 75 yards was phenomenal. It was. It was. Looks like Hopkins is, is going to take second. Third, third, fourth, fourth and, fifth. and fifth. Those are tough to swallow. Six points to ten. You lose four points every every event. You're not going to win a meet. Yep. Okay. Next up, hundred free. There's going to be three heats for the women, the girls. Uh, lane four, Grace Cavanaugh. Lane two, Bridget Velger. Lane six, Emily Schmidt. Bridget's got a nice fast skin on, cost you a few dollars. Cost a few dollars, yep. I've been through that in four years of Nikki. I bet you did. I, w I wish I was the one that invented it. <laughs> Talk about a racket. <laughs> As we mentioned, a lot of the Hopkinton swimmers, at least the girls, are wearing their fast skins tonight. And they need every bit of it. And there's nothing illegal about it either. Nope. This is a key race right here. Who's in lane six? Lane six is Emily Schmidt.
She's the only senior uh, from Hopkinton there, one of the captains. Grace is lengthening her lead. She's only a freshman? Freshman. Wow, she's got some, she's got some speed. She does. Okay, here it is. Looks Hopkinton, like second, first, third, first third. And fifth. That's okay. One, three, and five gets us 10 points to their six. So that's, again, a four-point total differential. <coughs> As they do a warm down, we have the second heat. Second heat, we have um, Kaylee Cohane, lane four. Peyton Salyards, lane two. Mallory Pishoff, lane six. Kaylee's a freshman. Peyton's a freshman and Mallory's a sophomore. I'll tell you, Mallory's moving over there in lane six. One more. One more heat. We have heat three, the girls, Maggie Miller, lane four, Julia Altman, lane two, Emily Schmidt, I'm sorry, Stephanie Capellos, lane six. Maggie, lane four, Julia, lane two, Stephanie, lane six. And as we said before, uh, TGD comes up. They have a very deep team. Three, three towns encompasses that team. Yep. What do we have for the boys coming up there, John? For the boys coming up, we have um, Paul Richardson, lane four, Austin Schofield, lane two. Brad Canty, lane six. It's a nice finish there for Hopkinton.
looks like Emily, uh, Stephanie might have been in first, Maggie in second, and Julia, I'm not sure exactly. Well, we know it wasn't a photo finish. No. My papers are all screwed up over here, so. But I'm gonna, gonna announce again the 100 free, there'll be one, there'll, there'll be one, um, one heat for the boys. Lane four, Paul Richardson. Lane two, Austin Schofield. Lane six, Brad Canty. The boys get a chance to swim a lot. Turn first 25. Groton Dunstable and Hopkinton in lane four. Paul All Richardson. Very yep. competitive, pacing themselves, but everybody's everybody's moving pretty quick at a fast pace. We're 50 down. We're uh, it's 100, so we're halfway there. No, he's got to kick it in. He's got to do the Dave Waddle kick. I feel like he's gonna. He's going to get him. Come on, he's going to get him. Nope. Nah, it looks like he just doesn't have enough energy. That's what's been happening. Close, close, and then second place. He might take second and third. Yep. He did. Second and third. OK. Not bad. Now we get the 500 free. 20 laps of the pool. Lean four, Abby Fisher. Lane two, Olivia Hanrahan. And lane six, Julia Gorgel. in and out again. I have uh, lane two, Olivia Hanrahan. Lane four, Abby Fisher. Lane six, Julia Goro. I feel like this is going to be a good finish for the girls. Again, this is an important event. They're going to pace themselves 20 laps of the pool, 25 yards. This is definitely a marathon. But they all have their fast kids on, so we'll see how they roll. Fisher in lane four? Um, yep. She's got a nice little stroke. Is she another one Freshman. of those uh, Westboro? Uh, yep. Yep. Also a very excellent runner. In the fall, um, Saw her face splashed on the front page of the Hopkinton Independent a couple of times for, I'm thinking going to the States in some event. Uh, 
she's neck and neck after five laps. Mora, Mora. It's a good pace. She realizes where her competitor is as long as she stays within that distance and they flip together and she's okay. Again, if we can get a one out of this, that, that takes the pressure off. Yeah, now it looks like to me that she's ahead of that one. Oh no, she's in, that lane five is ahead now, right? Lane five is barely ahead, yes. Barely ahead, okay. Now she's taking a little bit more of a lead. Yep. But this is a marathon. The re really, at this point in the, in the race, it's not, a, it's not operative which, what position you're in. Abby's keeping with her. If we can get a two, two, th two, three, five out of it. Two, that would work out for us. Two, three, five gets us. A wash. You're a math guy. Yep. Washes out. Then you can get yourself off to have a nice dinner with uh, your beautiful party. wife. Hopefully beautiful. there'll be some good food, but at least there'll be some beverages. Yes. And football. Football, yep. Again, they're head to head in lane two and lane three. She needs to take a, take a little bit more off and get going. Oh, that's for, the, that's for lane five. <coughs> yep. And as I'm trying to get an advantage point, it looks like she's taking a more substantial lead. Lane two, right? Lane two, yes. Yep. Lane five is going to take home first place. Yep. Lane four, Hopkinton's going to take home second place. And looks like lane two will take home third place, barring any yep. unforeseen problem. But the cheering's going. The team is out. All she has to do is clear the clear the hurdle. I'm sure she's in a lot of pain right now, but bring it home. Woo! That TGD in three didn't let go. Fifth place finish. So we got a wash on that one. 
Again, as long as we wash, I think we're going to win, but we can't wash everything. What do we have for the boys? For the boys, we have lane four, Zach Holbro. Lane two, Ray Lucas. Lane six, Connor Murchie. As they do a, a, a wind down lap. Yeah, I was noticing that the TGD swimmers, a lot of them didn't wind down. But for the 500, they have to wind down. Okay. So, lane six, they're cheering her on, Julia. That's Julia Gorgel. Yeah. That could be one of the greatest last names ever, Gorgel. Yep. No relation to Google. <laughs> Gorgel. It's an accomplishment. Lane four, Zach Holbro. Lane two, Ray Lucas. Lane six, Connor Murchie. I was talking to Bob Murchie before the meet. He said Connor's really looking forward to today to swim in that 500. You want to take over? Huh? Take it? No. The boys' team for TGD has shown a lot tonight. But I, this is a very fast pace I'm seeing here for the 500. I'm sure it's not sustainable, so I feel that probably there's going to be uh, some changes as we get further into the race. Yeah, lane five is slowing down again. from Julia Gorgel was she dropped 16 seconds. Wow. That's exciting. She dropped That's 16 seconds. Pretty amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she'll be walking on, uh, walking on clouds later. That's very exciting, yeah. All right, signing off. Back to uh, the salt mines behind the camera. Thanks so much, Dave. Thanks for helping us out with that fact. I'm thinking that um, I, I always lose track in these uh, 500s, who's in first, who's in second, third. I wait for the bell. As you can see in the right side of the, your screen, um, the competitors, teammates, how hold signs with to, to tell them which uh, lap they're on. And uh, we sort of follow along based on that. Wow, 16 seconds on that. That's, that's, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, you can see over there, Connor Murchie, lane six. Ray Lucas, lane two. Zach Holbro, lane four.
I did have somebody in the uh, back here ask me where they can watch this uh, broadcast online. I was thinking hopnews.com. Is that true, Dave? What's that? I missed that. I, I, I'm taking I, over for Ross until I don't know what happened to him. Maybe I, he went out for a smoke. I met a, I met a person back in the back room asking me where they can watch the broadcast. I said hopnews.com. It was somebody from TGD. Ah, ah, no, this is actually hcam.tv. Oh. Uh, hcam.tv. I'll have to see if I can find so that guy. <laughs> yeah, um, and I don't even know if they sh stream it on the web, but they might. Um, it's local cable access, so they might not have it yeah. uh, where they are. Well, I don't feel too bad about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a tooth and nail meet for sure. Oh, here comes Mr. Annenberg, and he's on camera right now. All right. Let me hand it over. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I had an unforeseen circumstance. I'm back. Yeah, Dave was just mentioning this is a very touch-and-go meet. I think for the boys and the girls, to be honest. Now, I just heard the bell. For Looks lane like lane five. five. Yep. So we're going to get a TGD win in this 500 free. Yeah, I don't think the boys are going to win this meet, quite honestly, but they'll get close. Yep. What do we have next for the next event? Next event, we have um, the 100 backstroke for the girls. Oh, I'm right. I'm sure you're right. I'm sorry. We have the 200 free relay coming up. A lot of heats in this. Um, we have, I'll, I'll announce it in a minute. So we have first and second for TGD. See lane three here. It looks like this might be third place lane. Oop. Okay. Here, this might be the third place. This is a kick. And that was uh, Zach, Zach Holbro, third place. And left on the, in the pool right now, swimming. It's a horse race here. And Lane two, looks like. Yung Jun Kim? Yung. Hmm. No, that was Ray Lucas. Oh, I apologize. That's fine. Okay, so then to line it up for the. Uh, what am I doing here? For the 200 freestyle relay. In lane four, we have uh, Grace Cavanaugh, Rachel Zale, Bridget Belger, Abby Fisher. Lane two, Emily Trudeau, Tiana McCann, Caitlin Salyards, Caitlin O'Connor. And in lane six, Julia Altman, Mallory Pishoff, Mercedes Lahai, Kaylee Cohen. We're going to have two heats of this um, 200 freestyle. And this will be the, if not the seminal event in this collective meet, 
it's going to be close to it for the girls at least. The boys, unless barring a short-term miracle, it looks like the girls, the boys will going to lose. And I think we're getting the final results from the girls diving at this present time. Unofficial results, Maddie won, Lissy two, and I think Allie Morrill four. We'll find out. Here we go. One-two finish for Hoppington again. For the girls, right? For the girls. As you mentioned, uh, this is a seminal event right here. Lane four. Keep an eye out. Do we got an unofficial score for the girls? I guess I'm asking for too much. And uh, lane four, Hopkinton is coming out. The block's pretty quick. Again, eight lanes of the pool, so. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 50, oh, it's coming up 200 free. Oh, 200 free. So 50, 50 free each yes. individual. Yes. I apologize there. I was. I'm looking at the 400, which is the last event of the evening. We have Rachel Zale in the pool for the girls in lane four. Tiana McCann, lane two. Again, for relays, only one, two, and three place point totals. <laughs> Looks like Hopkinton has it pretty much well in hand. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give the finish away, but looks like they have everything well in hand for at least number one. We need to move along with two to get, <coughs> to get three, so let's see how they're doing here. Who's gonna close it out for Hopkinton in lane four? Lane four, Abby Fisher. <laughs> She's closing it out right now. It looks like two and three are TGD. I could be wrong on that. No, nah, two, one and three are, are Hopkinton. Two one and is, three? Oh, two is three. TGD, okay. Well, it's gonna come down to this right here. It's, it's a horse race right at the end. I don't think she's gonna lose. I think she's got too much left in her. It's gonna be close, but she's ahead by a couple lanes. Yeah, yeah. Hopkinton picked up a first and third in that one, uh, which brings point totals 10 to four. I Very nice swim by Caitlin O'Connor there. <laughs> I don't think Hopkinton's going to lose this. I don't think Hopkinton's going to lose this. It was a very good relay. That was a key relay. One and three. Very strong finish for the Hopkinton Hillers. Very strong. Okay, so we have the, the second heat coming up. Lane four, Ashley Person, Sarah Kang, Leah Yenawine, Sierra Schlissel. Okay, so um, it looks like the lead is insurmountable for the TGD team.
Okay. Second heat. Second heat. Lane two, Stephanie Capellos, Megan Halloran, Kelly Burke, Maggie Miller, Hopkinton. As we said, every time um, there's been an event, TGD is in there. That's the sheer volume. Sheer volume. Haven't seen the greatest swimming, but Effort is with there. Them. Effort is there, yep. Again, these, uh, these events give the opportunity for the kids to get some experience in the pool and catch the eye and maybe do a personal best. Stephanie Capello is finishing off that first uh, heat. Looks very good. You know, you want to get your starts good. You want to get your dives. Turns. You want your turns yeah. and you want your finishes. Those are the three keys, starts, turns, and finish. Because 50 free comes quick. Sarah Kang cruising along. Lane four. Kelly Burke in the pool, lane two. How many heats for the boys? One heat. Maggie Miller finishing it up here in lane two. Sierra Schlissel finishing up lane four. So in the second heat, it looks like it's going to be Hopkinton in first. I think this is actually somebody finishing up. Yep. Hopkinton in first and second. Very nice showing in the second heat. Okay, so here we go. Um, the backstroke coming up, 100 back. Lane four, Emily Wee. Lane two, Julie Pillarella. Julia Pillarella. Lane six, Logan Salyards. Oh, we have to go with the girls. I'm sorry, we have to go with the boys first. So we have lane four, Jake Glover, Sam Richardson, Austin Schofield, Paul Richardson. Lane two, Aaron Howe, Sean Kelly, Ian Holmes, Brad Canty. And lane six, Ian Holmes. Oh, that, that's got to be a mistake. Colin Fine, Shane well, Horseman. Ian Holmes is twice? Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's got a clone. Jack Brennan. <laughs> it's just not happening that way. <laughs> At least, unless, unless you're in England and you're cloning the dog. There you go. For a hundred grand. <laughs> looks, like, looks like uh, that lane six is empty. I love my dog more than anything, but a hundred grand is that's a steep that's a steep price to pay for a, a, a dog that th doesn't have the same personality but the same look at least. Yes. And the boys are just trying to finish out good or yep. finish out well as as the vernacular is, just trying to show that they have some they still have some firepower left and they'll get to the next meet. The next meet is on Tuesday, Westwood. It's an away meet. So we won't be on air for at least a week. I'm looking for the Richardson boys here. In the pool for Hopkinton, Austin Schofield, Dean Holmes.
All right, it's gonna come down to the wire now. Looks like Hopkinton might take first place. Oh, this is gonna be close. Nah, it looks like Hopkinton's gonna take it by a hair. Is that Brad, is that Brad Canty out there? First place. My lane assignments are all screwed up. Third place, second and third for. Second and third for Dunstable, Groton, Tingsboro reversed. Okay, so here we on to the 100 backstroke. Lane four, Jung Jung Kim. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going with the boys. Go with the girls. Emily Wee, lane four, Julia Pillarella, lane two, Logan Salyards, lane six. And if I remember correctly, this is Emily, one of Emily Wee's um, favorite events, so hopefully she'll yeah, compete accordingly. So. Yep. And again, Brian King, AKA the king of the Sabre metrics and understanding what numbers will do as a science teacher at the aforementioned Hopkinton High School has yeah. devised a plan to get to 94 points for a team win. And we are closing the gap very closely. Yep. Three events to go. Hopkinton has to maintain no unforeseen errors or disqualifications, and it should be another victory in the win column. For the girls. Correct. Yep. Which are, as parents of girls, that's this important. Point, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> we love the boys, but we love the girls more. You heard that. Looks like there's been a, ch a change in the lane assignments here. This is not Julia in lane two. We think it's Logan. And Julia's in lane six. And Emily is in lane four. It's 100 backstroke, four lengths of the pool. Oh, Emily, that was a nice turn. She took a substantial lead. And uh, lane two, wow, they're both pushing. They are pushing the each other. The turn is key. Maybe that's why King moved them. Yeah, I don't know. Lane two, she's pushing hard. She's taking the lead. Can't tell from this angle, but they're tied. Yeah, they're tied. They're, they're tied. Coming, coming down the home stretch, the... tied. I think Emily has her by a, a hair. I think she's got her by a hair. Ah, I don't know. It is a, she wants no, it. No, she wants it. She's going to beat her. One, two. Two, four. I think that might. Two, four. Um, that might ice it. That did ice it. I'll make the call right now. You're going to make the call? I will, because what that, what that one, two gives us a 10 point total. But I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think there's anything left in the tank for the TGD swimmers. Okay, for the 100 backstroke for the boys, we have uh, lane four, Yung Jung Kim, lane two, Trevor Perkins, lane six, Kyle Hall. It's been a long day for the boys today. And as I mentioned, sometimes these uh, TGD girls are not taking the um, warm down. Oh, she's having a little trouble there. A little unsteady on her feet. Yep. She bump her head? I'm not sure. She's just trying to maintain her balance. She's a little winded. Okay. Trying to get her breathing back. Let's just hope for the best. So Hopkinton has 78 before that. Okay. 88. Hopkinton girls have 88 points. Yeah, so barring a uh, Disqualification, Hopkinton has taken another win. Yeah. Oh, was that what it was, Abby? I think it, oh, was it? Oh. 
What? That's what I was trying to tell you. Oh, sorry. What do we have for, what do we have for the uh, final single event? We have um, the breaststroke coming up. I just was informed that it was um, Abby Fisher came in second in that last race in the backstroke. It wasn't Emily Ray. Uh, no, it was um, Emily and Abby were in there. So we have the breaststroke coming up for the girls. Who are the entries? We have uh, Lydia Franklin, lane four, Tiana McCann, lane two, Kylie Salyards, lane six. Hopkinton's going to take two, three, and five. Excuse me. Yeah. Two, four, and five. I stand corrected. Two, four, and five. And that gets them seven points to eight. So that's a loser. So here we are. We have the 100 breaststroke coming up for the girls. As we mentioned, Lydia Franklin, lane four. Tiana McCann, lane two. Kylie Salyards, lane six. Almost there. You're almost at your party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm way ahead of that one. All right, let's get this party started. Four lanes to the pool for the breaststroke. Let's see how fast these girls can do it in. Lydia is in the move in the groove right now. I don't think that girl's gonna be able to keep it up. Yep, she's coming out. Come on, Lydia. It's a horse race right here. I think she nibbed her right yeah. at the end. Yeah. Lydia right. Franklin takes home the gold. And that brings it that brings it to 94 points unofficially with another victory in the tank. Who do we have for the boys? For the boys, we have uh, lane, fo uh, lane four, Sam Richardson, lane two, Sam Cody, lane six, Shane Horseman. Gotcha. Are there just one one heat? For one the, heat for the boys, yeah. No, one heat for the 400. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. Once again, the numbers um, are strongly in against the boys, but. It's important to show up at the end.
as they do the final tallying, the judges are looking at their score sheets based on the timer's photo finish, but it looked like Lydia timed her out. I felt like she timed her out at the end. That was as exciting as it gets in a swim race right there. Yeah. timer coming up. <laughs> Sam Richardson lean four, Sam Cody lean two, Shane Horseman lean six. And they're off. Four lengths of the pool. <laughs> Sam Richardson's been swimming all day. Comes out of the first turn in first. He's got a nice stroke to him. If he can get a little lead, then he can give some, himself a cushion, which allows him to give a better breathing apparatus and get this victory. It looks like he's taken a nice little one and a half stroke lead there. He just needs to complete the final tour. If he can get a one three, it would be very helpful and still get a five, that would be nice. Yeah. It's a nice finish by uh, young Richardson boy. Take a one, three, and a five. That'll get them 10 points to six. I don't know, I don't think that'll do it, but at least it'll be a nice finish for the boys. Okay, coming up in the 400 freestyle relay. Lane four, Grace Kavanaugh, Olivia Hanrahan, Emily Wee, Lydia Franklin. Lane two, Bridget Belger, Paitlin Salyards, Emily Schmidt, <laughs> Logan Salyards. for the school record, and they do have their fast skins on, so we'll see how they roll. Lane six, Kaylee Cohane, Caitlin O'Connor, Julia Gorgel, Julia Pillarella. Time it. time it, please. Just to see where they're going. Yep. Thank you. Lane four. We have nothing else to shoot for other than potential personal bests and potential school records. Yep. We're going to try and do a manual timing here. Via the apple. Via the apple. As we said, uh, Grace Cavanaugh, Olivia Hanrahan, Emily Wee, Lydia Franklin, All lane right. four. These are the four best uh, competitors, and I think Coach King with the fast skins, he wants to break this record. It's in his mind, it's in his blood, and he likes to see school records broken. already uh, unofficially over for the girls and unofficially over for the boys for that matter. But again, sometimes relays just take on different lives of their own as opposed to just the individual events. So we'll see how it goes in two, four, and six for the girls from Hawkington. And they are off. I'm team. I'm I'm getting her. You're going to do the. Yeah. 100 yards each individual. Yeah, it's a tough Four one. Yep. Four lanes to the pool for each girl. Grace doing nicely there. Let's see if we can get a 100 split. Come on, Bridget. 
give us a split on lane four. Six sixty seven for the first hundred. That's fast. See if we can get a second split. Come on, Olivia. Um, one point oh four, like one minute four. Okay. Yeah, so Emily Wee is in there now, lane four. You're hearing a lot of splits Olivia. here, 58-12, Emily split. What do we have uh, total right now? Yeah, they're not gonna break it. A little short. I think, the, I think the test of time will tell over the course of this uh, meet because they gave it their all for the first two hour plus and I think there was just nothing left in the tank. Yeah. In each the pool, the girls Lydia in the Franklin pool. in the pool. Each one of the girls in the pool have won individual events, so. Yes. Come on, Logan. Come on, Julia. Come on, Julia. No. no. We thought the lane four was going for the um, 346 school record, but it didn't happen today. Good oh, dance with Anna with 353. Come on, Logan! Okay, coming up for the boys. Moving right along so Ross can get to his party. With, uh, Sean Kelly, lane four. Br Sean Kelly, Brad Canty, Zach Colbro, Young Jung Kim. Lane two, Trevor Perkins, Ian Holmes, Colin Fine, Kyle Hall. And lane six, oh, here's somebody finishing up here from TGD. I'll speak over that. Lane six, Ray Lucas, Connor Murchie, Jack Brennan, Sam Cody. A lot of good sportsmanship being shown here. We still have a TGD swimmer in the pool.
right, one last event. Then the only thing left is the final cheer. It's usually really pretty consistent with the potato chip, potato chip. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> mm. It's great spending a Saturday night with you. The fact that I'm missing football and a party has no bearing on my <laughs> loyalty to the Hopkinton Hillers swim and diving program. You're ever the professional, Ross, ever the professional. So here we go. I'm going to say it out again. Lane four, Sean Kelly, Brad Canty, Zach Holbro, Young Jung Kim, lane two, Trevor Perkins, Ian Holmes, Colin Thine, Kyle Hall, lane six, Ray Lucas, Connor Murchie, Jack Brennan, Sam Cody. All right, boys, let's do a, Let's get some fast times. And it doesn't look like lane six is there. So it's just two. Two and four. No, no school records were broken tonight, but there were some personal bests, so we'd like to congratulate the swimmers. Again, congratulate all the volunteers, our video staff, our on-air on -air announcers, score cable, timers, coaches, parents, officials and just the fans in general coming to the event and supporting the Hopkinton Hillers swim and diving program as the girls take home another victory and the boys fall just a tad short. Yeah, it's a great it's a great way to spend a Saturday night. Enjoying a little swimming. As long as there's no snow on the ground, I'm okay with it. Absolutely. Looks like the Grot, Grot, uh, Tingsboro, Groton, Dunstable boys are moving along pretty quickly there. Yeah, lane five, right? Correct. Yep. Looks like they'll get a first and a third. You never know. The final lap coming up. Final laps. Still a lot of idle ch chatter going around, it looks like. As we can hear it on our microphones, the crowd is the crowd is excited. TGD is gonna break first place. Looks like Hopkinton will take second as as it stands right now. It's a photo finish! That's no, a turn. <laughs> At the turn. Mm. That'll make it look good. But you called that. I, I didn't see that coming. That's Young Jun Kim, the Hopkinton side.
They are a raucous crowd, the TGDs. And Hopkinton takes up the rear in lane two. And the official meet is over. Over. Unofficially, Hopkinton Hiller's girls win. Hopkinton Hiller boys are on the losing end of the stick. We have one more thing to do again, as we discussed earlier, the cheer. Usually they're spontaneous, as I've been told by yeah. my daughter, who's a previous captain. They do it spontaneously when they girls. do their circle around the boys lost. prior to their coaches meeting that captains get together with the high fives, give the cheer. Here are the final tallies, and we move on to the next thing. It was a lot closer than I thought. It was a split decision. There it is. John, it's been a pleasure working with you. Everybody drive safely. You too. And we are out. Thanks so much.